Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. If you are new to our webinar series, my name is Pauline Mazendan Garcia. I am the Director of Care Transition for Livingston Memorial VNA and Hospice, and I want to welcome all of you to our very first webinar series of the year. Before I introduce our speaker today, I want to just go over a few housekeeping notes. Um, you've probably seen it on the slides earlier. Um, so this presentation will be recorded and it will be posted on our website. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to use the chat function of your Zoom app to submit your questions. Dr. Sierra will do our best. We will do our best to answer all the questions that you have during the presentation. All the questions and answers will also be posted on our website post presentation. If you run into any technical issues, please feel free to use the chat function as well, and we will do our best to assist you with that. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Rick Esguera. I want to talk about a few, just a little bit of background about Dr. Esguera. Dr. Rick Esguera has been practicing physical therapy for the last 40 years and has been part of the Livingston Memorial Visiting Nurse Association for the last 25 years. He's active in educating the community in the realm of injury prevention, including fall prevention for the elderly and injury prevention in the workplace. Pre-COVID, he served the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging, as in presentations were featured in local publications. Currently, he provides free operative education to potential joint replacement patients for local orthopedic surgeons and hospitals in the area. He earned his doctorate in physical therapy from St. Scholastica in Duluth, Minnesota, and has been an active member of the American Physical Therapy Association since 1985. He is a long-term resident of Camarillo. Rick enjoys his time with his grandchildren and shared the vision of continued responsibility and the preservation of Ventura County. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Rick Esguera, our speaker for today's presentation of Exercises for Healthy Living. Thank, Thank you. Rick. Thank you, Thank you. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Livingston Memorial Visiting Nurses Association's webinar on Exercise for Healthy Living. I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's get to it. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to try to uh, use our time uh, you know, quite efficiently. All right, so everyone probably has had in one point in their life tried to do exercises or embarked on some exercise program. So uh, hopefully we can share some good information uh, in this presentation to you. All right, this is a sort of a, 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 a guideline um, uh, before you uh, think of getting or doing anything like this, please consult with your doctor or your physical therapist, all right? Because uh, some of these things that you're about to see uh, are quite beneficial, but also could pose some danger. All right, so let's get started, shall we? All right. Now, we're gonna be uh, covering uh, the types of exercises that people can do, uh, what are the benefits of doing these exercises, and some of the potential drawbacks. Yes, it's a double-edged sword, I'm afraid. Um, even if uh, a lot of people say, oh, we should all be doing exercises, um, there are certain conditions, there are certain uh, types of uh, the population in our population who should be very careful about starting or doing them. All right, so we're gonna discuss some of them also. All right, and then towards the end, we'll provide some live examples of how some of these exercises are done. Hopefully it'll give you a, a roundabout view of how things are done safely, of course. All right, all right, let's get started, shall we? All right, um, let's define first what, what is exercise, because a lot of people talk about exercise all the time, but uh, we might not necessarily understand what it refers to. Now, as defined by the National Institute of Health, exercise is a physical activity that is planned it doesn't happen by accident, of course. It's planned. It's structured, meaning uh, there are certain parameters where you have to go by. And it's repetitive, of course, because you have to constantly go about it to get to your outcome. 
or to your goal. And uh, finally, uh, you know, you have to have an intermediate objective for improvement or maintenance of your health and overall physical fitness. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? But if you try to condense it uh, to one, to just one, uh, one uh, idea in mind, uh, you can't just do it without having a goal in mind. And while you're doing it, you have to have certain parameters set by you and your doctor, right? And if, if you have that, that might be a good recipe to get started. All right, so now that we know what exercise is, if you happen to see one of your neighbors, one of your friends walking uh, on the sidewalk, and you say, hi, uh, how are you? What are you doing? And someone says, I'm exercising. Uh, you can probably ask him, exercising? Are you really exercising? What are you exercising for? You know, uh, and what are you checking when you're doing exercises? So if a person answers, I'm going to be walking this much, I'm going to be checking my blood pressure, I'm going to be checking my heart rate, and then the next day, possibly I'll do a little bit more. And then I'll report back to my doctor, and he can tell me if I should do more or I should uh, lessen it a bit. So you see, that's what uh, exercises are. There, there should be some rules of engagement. All right, so uh, what are the types of exercises? Now, today, we're going to be talking about strengthening exercises, of course, that will improve the strength of your muscles, mostly. Flexibility exercises, the ability of your joints to go through full range, upper extremities, the spine, lower extremities, and we'll touch on balance exercises, all right? Um, and the last one is endurance exercises. This is, you know, to, to overcome fatigue. Uh, but uh, th this, this last part, uh, we purposely did not include much of it. And the reason is, it, this, the information with regards to uh, showing this and promoting this is, is a huge amount. It's an enormous amount. So, uh, it, 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 by the way, if you were to study exercises in academia, it would probably take you two or three semesters, close to you know, half a year or a year even. So we dare not just condense it uh, dangerously into one platform. So we decided not to include endurance exercises as much, but we will uh, uh, talk about strengthening, flexibility, and balance exercises today. All right? All right, now uh, strengthening exercises, of course, uh, that will uh, uh, involve uh, using certain equipment later on, we'll be uh, able to show you. Uh, you don't need equipment, but if you if you do, uh, you don't need to. Uh, well, here at Livingston, we don't uh, sell anything. We just give you some ideas on how to procure them. All right, uh, let's talk about the benefits of exercises. All right, that's the next next topic we're going to talk about. All right. So uh, regular activity. Of course, uh, it involves fun. It 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 it, it involves uh, a time, and also it uh, it has to be uh, included, integrated in your in your daily life. Uh, but of course, there's a danger of overdoing it. So uh, again, uh, getting back to uh, what we talked about earlier, structure. All right, um, being more active is very safe for most people. However, you should check with your doctor. All right. Now, um, we are introducing to you this morning the PARQ form. Uh, all right. This is a very, it's, it's a very good, it's an excellent form to screen whether you have some danger signs or red flags before you do any exercise program. All right. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll show you some of the questions. All right. All right, some of the questions are very simple, and uh, we will include this, this questionnaire, by the way. Uh, it's, it's, it's free. Uh, we did not design this. This has been designed scientifically. You'll find this also in the internet if you want to. But uh, I'll, I'll just go about this uh, really quick. Uh, has your doctor ever said to you that you have a heart condition? All right. Uh, did you, do you feel pain in your chest during physical activity? In the past month, have you had chest pain? 
Uh, did you lose your balance because of dizziness or did you, did, did you lose consciousness? Um, do, do you have a joint or bone problem that could be made worse if you do some physical activity? Uh, is your doctor currently prescribing you medications for blood pressure, like diuretics, you know, water pills they call it, uh, that is for your heart condition, uh, like for, for patients who, have, who happen to have heart failure? Um, do you know of any other reason why you should not uh, be uh, indulging in physical activity? So you see, these are just standard questions. If you answer yes to any of these, stop. Consult with your doctor first before proceeding with any physical activity. All right, let's go to the next set. All right, so um, like I said, uh, your doctor is always included in this because your health is very paramount, it's very important. If we make a mistake of doing something without consulting with a doctor, we could be uh, potentially exposing you to some, to some uh, injury or danger that might hurt you, all right? So it's very important that you do consult with your doctor, especially those, those first seven questions, all right? All right, this is... Uh, what the, the, the part Q form looks like. And you, as you can see, it's 2023. I can imagine there's a, a new one already, uh, 2024. And this is actually expanded into more questions. But those seven questions are, are basically standard. If you answer yes to them, then you have to contact your doctor. All right, this is just to show you what the form looks like. All right. Now, what are the benefits of exercise? Let's talk about that, all right? Now, uh, it, almost every kind of activity will increase circulation into your brain, in the centra, into the central nervous system. And that's why it improves your thinking, your cognition. It's well documented that people who are more active, who, into, uh, who uh, uh, do more activity than someone who is uh, sedentary, will have better cognitive or cognition, right? It reduces your uh, short-term anxiety or worry. Um, it reduces the risk of depression. Yeah, notice it says reduces your risk. If you are already diagnosed with, uh, a, with a diagnosis of depression, you have to talk to your doctor about, uh, about things because you might be taking antidepressants. However, it's also well documented that uh, regular exercise uh, will help also with uh, dealing with depression. And you, another, another bonus is you, you can actually sleep better at night, all right? Uh, managing your weight, uh, of course, uh, now with the world of Ozempic, if you've heard it, you know, this new generation of diabetes medications people are using appropriate, in a, inappropriately or appropriately for weight loss, they're out there now. But exercise is a natural way of maintaining or losing weight. Yes. Uh, moving on to it reduces health risks, all right? Risk for diabetes, risk for cardiovascular, your heart uh, conditions. Uh, it, it, believe it or not, it also helps resistance to infectious diseases like the flu, pneumonia, COVID-19. Remember, it reduces your risk. It's not a vaccine, right? We're not, we're not saying that. Uh, it also helps uh, in, some, in some cases, even cancer, all right? And uh, for, uh, to name a few, breast cancer, bladder, colon, endometrium, esophageal, kidney, lung, stomach cancers. It, it's, uh, it's, it, all the research is there to prove that exercise, improved acti increased activity, uh, compared to someone who's sedentary, actually helps these conditions. Of course, it transcends your bones and your muscles. Um, uh, the bones, of course, uh, it's actually in, in a constant flux of getting rid of uh, bone cells and creating bone cells. And that's why you have osteoporosis or osteopenia. And exercises does help this. Uh, it also helps uh, to improve your muscle strength and also increase helps to maintain the bulk of your muscles. It's well documented that people who don't exercise or don't have less activity, most of the time, uh, their muscles atrophy, they shrink. All right. Uh, it also improves your ability to do daily activities, and it may also reduce your risk of falling. 
and we'll we'll show you that later on. But that's exciting. You'll see it. Um, as you know, when you fall, you run the risk of uh, sustaining a hip fracture, a wrist fracture, or any a, a bone fracture for that matter. And if you reduce your risk, then you you, you basically help uh, uh, in in preventing injuries. All right. It also helps to manage chronic conditions, arthritis, uh, the the uh, out of control blood sugar levels and diabetes. It also lowers your risk of mortality, all right, from the cancers too. Another thing it helps is your brain uh, health. Uh, like we mentioned, it helps to possibly help in managing uh, cognitive impairment. And here's another bonus. It uh, has been proven to improve uh, longevity or lifespan. All right. This is, by the way, information from the Centers for Disease Control. All right. Um, now this is, uh, we're not going to touch much on this. This is basically what happens when you want to move a part of your body. Let's say you want to move your arms, you want to move your legs, any muscle in your body. It has to come from your brain, of course. The brain sends a signal, all right, through, down your spinal cord, and then it goes through the nerves, and it goes to the synapse between the nerve and the muscle. It releases uh, a, a neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, and then you have a movement. And we're not going to deal with this, we're not transforming into physiologists in this class or in this presentation, but it just uh, helps to give you an idea. Here's a, uh, a, a few slides we borrowed from the internet, and then they, 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 they in no shape or form belong to Livingston, but we just borrowed them. Um, we'll go to the next. Uh, Here's a nice uh, representation. We borrowed it from the Institute of Graphology. Uh, your brain starts to think about a movement. It goes to your spinal cord. That round thing is uh, a cross section of your spinal cord. It sends a signal down the nerve through a propagated signal, and it ends into your muscle. And a neurotransmitter, like I said, sends, uh, sends this transmitting signal into the muscle itself each muscle fiber. And uh, the next slide, please. There's the spinal cord. You see how long it is? And you see it's got this whole matrix of nerves that goes to each and every muscle in the body. And uh, finally, uh, it goes into, you see those uh, uh, tentacles looking yellow uh, things? Those are actually the, the nerves or the branch of the, the motor nerves, the, 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 the uh, neurons. And then it releases the neurotransmitter to each of those muscle fibers and it creates movement. Right? And that's why if you have certain conditions that prevent this from happening, uh, then you will have some difficulty doing exercises. Examples are uh, MS, Parkinson's disease, um, you know, things like that, things of those nature. And uh, so uh, make sure, like I said, talk to your doctor uh, about uh, some of these conditions before you start any of these activities. All right. All right. All right. Uh, we will uh, get started with the, with the demonstration. All right. We'll start by looking at um, We'll start looking at the the neck. All right. Here's this handsome gentleman uh, doing some neck rotation. You see how gentle it is. This is just motion. There is no resistance to it. Now you're doing bending, bending forward, you're trying to touch your chin towards your sternum or your chest bone, uh, and you line up with your shoulders. Anytime you have to do neck, you, you line it up and don't do any extension. All right. Now you see I'm pressing against my head. That serves as your resistance, very mild resistance, and that's for strengthening. Now we move on to shoulder exercises. Now these are just very simple range of motion exercises. You notice. 
We try to do it slowly. For people with arthritis, I turn my shoulder out and I involve the rest of the body. When I'm trying to do some exercises, you turn it out and there's a reason for that. You turn it out so that your glenoid uh, cavity is clear, all right? And you see this one, you're lying down. You don't need fancy equipment so that you can do very simple range of motion. And this is also a way for us, for physical therapists like myself, to find out if you have any limitations. Here's a sample of a very simple flexion exercise. This next one is how it rotates. You see how the ball of your humerus or your, your upper arm rotates inside the capsule or inside the joint. If you have limitation on that, you will have limited uh, problems uh, with uh, reaching up. Now you notice when I turn on my side, I use my arms as pillows and that's to keep my neck straight. Here I am doing the same thing, rotating. All right. Uh, let me stop for a sec. All right. Now we're going to show you uh, uh, sort of exercises that you can do uh, without any equipment, no equipment, but now you're providing uh, some resistance to the shoulder. We'll start with a very basic one. This one is a very simple push-up. Now, if you want to make it harder, the degree of difficulty, you move further forward. Now, this is a bit harder than the first one. And if you really want to make it more difficult, for those of you who have developed strength in your shoulders, you do a regular push-up. Not, not everyone can do this, by the way. And that's why we start with the very basic and we move to the more difficult one. Here we are uh, utilizing some dumbbells with adjustable weights. You can get this from any uh, sporting goods store. Now, if you notice, I never go beyond the level of the shoulder. Now, this one I do, and you notice I start close to the body and you go straight up. Again, you need to be checked before you start doing these exercises. You limit it up to there. All right. And then this one, you bring it close to the body and then you go straight up. It's a very mass muscle movement because you're using all the joints of your upper extremity. Here, we are confining ourselves to being in bed again. And you're just going straight up. Remember the push-up? This is exactly the same as the push-up, but it must might be a lot lighter because the weights, you can control the weights. You can make it uh, a couple of pounds, three pounds, four pounds, five pounds, and you can progress accordingly. Very good exercise for strengthening the front part of your shoulder. Here's some of the equipment that you can use. It doesn't have to be expensive. These are TheraBands, yellow, red, green, and you can see I'm gonna show you the red one. Uh, the color base, by the way, is, uh, shows you the amount of resistance. Here you go. This is the same exercise that I did with the dumbbells, but I'm using a rubber band. Your therapist might have worked with you with these things. Very easy, very simple. Just make sure you're holding on to them. And this next one is for strengthening the back of your arms, the triceps. Obviously, if you're in pain, stop. All right. This one is just, you notice, I told you, I, nor I normally rarely go up uh, higher than shoulder level. This one is for strengthening the rotator cuff of your muscles. If you have a tear, you should not be doing any of these. Here, we try to uh, pin this band on the door jamb to help, help stabilize it so we can do a different movement. Ingenious, isn't it? Right, some examples, and this one is going forward. 
This should be pain-free, by the way, when you're doing these exercises. All right, next we'll show you some exercises that involve the hand, wrist, and forearm. Now, if you notice the forearm of that uh, muscularly rugged individual right there, you can see that when you squeeze a ball, you're actually using the muscles of your forearm. And we could also use regular uh, everyday items like rubber bands to strengthen the other side of your forearm. So you can see the tendons on those muscles are working. Very good exercise and very simple, especially for you who have uh, people who have, are beginning to have arthritic hands. Now we're going to move on to uh, strengthening of your core. Now that's a sit up. Very difficult for the neck, very difficult. That's the old fashioned way of strengthening. A better way to do it is isometric strengthening by pushing your back down against the floor or back down, right? And you notice the pelvis is tilting. That's a very good sign that you have good mobility on your lumbar spine. To make it more difficult, you push down your back against the bed and you try to move one leg without, of course, your back buckling. You have to you maintain your back down against the floor while you're doing this. Very scientific. Now, this is one of the most difficult ones, and I don't recommend doing this as a first one. You push your back down against the bed and you do both legs at the same time. You notice I'm doing it close to the body and then moving further. Right. Now this one, if you want to do the, the sit up, then my suggestion is make sure your neck is straight. You pay attention to your, your, your neck. All right. All right, moving on. This is bridging. And be careful again with your neck, all right? And this is good for your hips and your knees, and also for the core strength of your abdominal muscles. Right. Don't go any higher, that's high enough if you happen to uh, like this exercise, very simple. Now, if you wanna make it harder, there's a degree of difficulty right there, doing it with just one leg. And Notice we're trying to maintain the proper form. All right, we're going to pause a second just to tell you and, and show you that um, all these exercises, we're starting from an easy one and showing you degrees of difficulty. All right, so you, you'll see that most of the exercises here, you have the simple one first and then the more difficult ones follow. All right, I uh, will resume. Now, this one is a very basic one for patients who have hip uh, difficulty. This is a very gentle one. You're not lifting the leg, you're just sliding the leg. And then you stop and hold it for a few seconds. Right? You, some of your motion might be limited. That's all right. Just go as far as you can. This is one of those exercises we also do for patients who are uh, preparing for joint replacement uh, surgery. Very simple, all right? Now, if you want to make that more difficult, again, we go on the side. You can use a pillow or use your hand and make sure your neck is straight. And this one is against gravity. So uh, the only thing that you're going against is gravity. And uh, this might look very simple, but you know, be careful that your legs don't go waggling in front or back. Just keep it right in the middle. Very good exercise for patients who might be getting a joint replacement or considering it or strengthening that middle part of your gluteal muscle. Now, this one is a very good exercise for maintaining your hip extension and flexion. All right. You might have to use your bed. You hang on the bed and you notice one leg is on top of the bed and the other leg is hanging at the edge. Very nice. I like this exercise a lot. It gives you a nice movement 
And so that movement is rarely used. Now we're going to move on to the knee. You know, big joint, a lot of problems with the knee. And research has shown if you have a minor pain in the knee, strengthening exercises can help it. This is a nice exercise for strengthening the hip and the knee. It's called straight leg raise. It's a good exercise, by the way, if you had a joint replacement of the knee, I wouldn't recommend it for the hip. Now, here I'm showing you a sample of uh, some weights that you can adjust by yourself. All right. Each of that uh, weight there is about uh, half a pound. And there's about 10 of them. So there's five pounds on that blue packet. And you can adjust it accordingly based on how much you can carry. Uh, I get, you can get these from uh, regular uh, sporting goods outlet stores. All you have to do is strap it across your ankle. They call it ankle weights also. And like I said, you can adjust the weight. You can start off with lighter weights and you can do some extensions. Very simple, but very, very effective for strengthening the quadriceps, especially of those of you who run, who walk quite a bit. This is strengthening the opposite side of your knee, your hamstrings. Now, for those of you who have pain in the anterior or front part of your knee, uh, right around your kneecap, this might not be the most comfortable. You can do it this way. Very simple, very effective. Again, if you're experiencing pain while you're doing it, stop. Now, for the ankle, all right, this is a very important one. This is excellent for balance. So if you have the, uh, the time to do it, right? you strap the weight on your foot and you can do multiple sets of 10 repetitions, maybe two uh, times a day for three times a week. You don't have to do this every day. Most of these exercises, please don't do it every day. It's strenuous. Let's start with some balance exercises. Very simple, uh, shallow knee bends, I call them. And you notice, I'm showing you how it gets harder as you go deeper until you do a deep squat like that. If that's your uh, goal, then you have to work on it. It's best sometimes to hold on to something while you're doing it, because you don't want to be losing your balance, all right? You go a little lower and you notice you try to keep your feet flat. If your, if your ankle goes up like that, then you have some tightness on your Achilles tendon and you need to get that addressed first. If you have tightness on your hips, this is what might happen to you. So you see, if you have tightness in any of your joints, it causes other problems too. Now we're moving on to just strengthening your calf muscles. It's also good for balance. If you want to make it difficult and you're in no way have any problems with your ankle, you can do it with one leg at a time. It's difficult than it looks like, by the way. This is a gentle flexibility or stretching exercise for the ankle, for your Achilles tendon. Notice I keep my knee straight on the back leg and keep your foot flat. Don't lift your, your heel up like that or else you're wasting your time. There you go. And do it slowly, of course. When you're doing range of motion or flexibility exercises, speed is not important. You can get hurt if you do it fast enough. Now here's a sample of some basic balance exercises, including the, the knee bends that we just showed you. Supported with two hands, supported by one hand. And finally, no hands. Look, Ma, no hands. Oh, you can lose your balance. That's a good actor, right? You see, 
you're doing your knee bends, always have your hands ready to catch yourself. This is a nice exercise for your hip. As you're doing your active hip, the other hip is supporting your weight. So you're actually exercising both sides. You can do it with both hands, with one hand, and progressing finally in doing it with no hands. Be very careful when you're doing this. You can certainly lose your balance as you're doing this and uh, it might cause a mishap. So always have someone with you if you're, if you're going to do this for the first time or have a physical therapist uh, right there working with you. Next one would be just the toe raises, the heel raises, same thing. Two hands, progressing to the one hand version, progressing to no hands. You have to work, work your way up into doing that. The next one, this is really important, up on the heel. A lot of people can't do this. So if you do this for the first time, Make sure that your back is against something for support. I usually use a kitchen counter. All right, then we'll move on to, see that gentleman just lost his balance, but he was safe because he had something behind him. Next one is just simply walking with some support next, next to you and then trying to simulate walking backwards slowly. This looks simple enough, but for some people this could be challenging. No hands. Right. Oops, almost fell, but caught himself. Now here's some really advanced strengthening and balance exercises for people who are much stronger. If you have a lot of weakness or if you have some balance impairment, look at that. You could easily do that, so be careful. You have to clear that step. This is a very shallow step, by the way. All right. Now as you're pushing yourself up like that, As you're lowering yourself, you're actually using a lot of strength on the, on the, the leg that's on top of the uh, step. So as you're lowering yourself, that leg on top on the step is holding you while you're lowering yourself. So it, it really uh, works that, those muscles uh, aggressively. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you're sore if you do some of these things. Now, how do we progress this exercise? We could uh, use a higher step. This uh, step, uh, step exercise uh, tool we have, uh, we, we procured this from a local uh, sporting goods and you can adjust the height of the step. This is a bit higher. You see that that leg has to work a lot harder to get you on, the, on that step. So you can actually simulate going up and down stairs. Uh, this is a, we, we use this too when we're trying to work on patients after hip or knee replacements too, uh, when we're working on uh, getting them to safely negotiate stairs safely, okay? See that, that's a, that's a very steep step. Steep step because that left leg on top of the step is holding on or uh, accepting your weight as you're going down, the one leg that I was pointing to. And as you're going up, it does the same thing. All right. That's a very aggressive exercise. I don't, uh, I can't imagine people doing this if they're unsteady, like see that, that, uh, that, that person almost lost his balance. All right. And uh, 
The next set of exercises, uh, we didn't forget patients who might be on the wheelchair. All right, so we're going to be doing that next. All right, this is just a different version where you're going sideways. So you can actually see that leg trying to hold you up and trying to pick you up. All right, very aggressive exercise. Now, for those patients who might be confined to a wheelchair, we didn't forget you. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot do exercises. It's a very simple program that uh, your physical therapist or your exercise physiologist or your coach can do with you. You did some hip exercises, some knee exercises, some ankle exercises, see? You can also do this. And then of course, we try to integrate some functional movements like pushing yourself off. And at the same time, strengthening exercises for your arms so that you can push out of the chair much more effectively. Now, if your legs are in front, you're not going to be able to get up uh, effectively, so uh, efficiently. So you might have to pull your legs back. Make sure that the wheels in front of your wheelchair is positioned like that, or else you might lose your balance. And you see how we're trying to work on getting out of the chair and also limbering up the hips, like simulating walking. If you haven't walked, this is a nice way of simulating walking using all the muscles you use for walking. And then we progress to balancing. And you're safe. You're safe doing this if there's someone in front of you. Because if you happen to lose your balance, someone will catch you in front. And if you fall backwards, you have the chair. Very good acting, if I may say so. All right. So we've shown you just some examples, and we could go on for a long time showing you more and more uh, examples of exercises. But in this short period of time, we have shown you some examples that uh, at least will give you an idea of some of the exercises that involve strengthening, range of motion, and some balance exercises. The endurance exercises will have to come later on if we present another, uh, another of these in our series because there's a lot to cover uh, when it comes to endurance exercises. All right. Okay. Dr. Scarrett, that was a very informative demonstration and presentation of healthy exercises. Right. So a few questions that came up. What do you think is the most important takeaway of the demonstration that you presented today? Right. Well, um, as we have shared with the definition of uh, an exercise program, it's important to consult with your doctor first if you have certain conditions that will prevent you from doing this safely. Number one is your safety. Uh, it, it, this exercise program will be useless if it, it increases your potential to injury, or to harm. That's our number one priority, that you get the full benefit uh, from the exercise, uh, exercise we showed you and not to get uh, any uh, potential side effects or any, any, uh, you know, any injuries uh, from doing them. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like negates the concept of healthy exercise if you end up That's injuring right. yourself. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was watching the demo, the videos, and it does look like there are some exercises that are a bit more challenging than others. Can you talk more about the range of difficulties of those exercises? Right. So we try to demonstrate that uh, even if you don't use equipment, you can actually increase the intensity of the exercise. You, you can increase, this is the term they use, degree of difficulty. Mm -hmm. It's a fancy word by saying it's just more difficult, just yeah. harder. And uh, when you make your muscles work harder, they actually get more benefit. Mm -hmm. But you have to start somewhere. You have to start with the easy ones and then progress accordingly to the more difficult ones, slowly. Right. That's why you need a coach, you need your physical therapist or your doctor to tell you when to move up. All right? Yeah. And that way you're safe. Uh, you will feel soreness sometimes, that's normal, 
-hmm. But if you feel pain, uh, we don't want that. Okay. Yeah, right. So on the note of, you mentioned soreness, are there any steps that um, our participants and community members could do pre-exercise to avoid maybe any sort of soreness? Oh, good question. Uh, well, one thing that uh, I, did, I failed to mention, if you're going to do some exercises, it's probably a good idea to do it in a warm room, not in a hot room, of course, because you'll be perspiring, you'll be sweating. But um, if, if you're in a warm room, it's much better for the muscles and your ligaments and your joints. Don't do it when you're freezing. When you're freezing, when you're cold, your ligaments and your muscles won't move as well. Your flexibility suffers. So it's important to do it in, in a well ventilated room, you know, in a, in a warm room and yourself too. wear some warm clothing. You might want to do some very gentle, just walking around first to get your circulation going. You don't want to do this exercise just after waking up. You wake up and you're just doing it. Not a good formula. It's probably good to be up in about the first few hours before you do any of these exercises. All right. Oh, uh, by the way, we haven't touched on this. Uh, with the, it's important to be checking your blood pressure, your heart rate, your breathing rate. We didn't touch on this too much, but it's a good parameter to start with. Right. So with that, what happens if mid exercise, they start to feel sort of unusual or they start to feel pain? Right, well, uh, very simple, stop. Stop everything you're doing. Let's say you're doing a very simple exercise and you start having chest pains, stop immediately. All right. Um, if you feel the need, you can activate 911, obviously. All right. Um, uh, there are certain things, like I said, that has to be screened before you even start any of these exercises. That's why we began by uh, using that PAR Q. PARQ form. Uh, it will help you uh, make a decision whether this is right for you, if it's the right time for you to get started, or may perhaps you have to postpone it a bit and talk to your doctor first. So th that would uh, be a, a nice guideline for you. Right. And so lastly, once someone has completed their session of exercise, what should they do post exercise? Very good. Obviously, you get to rest. Um, you shouldn't be doing these exercises on a full bout right away. You should rest in between. Not too long, though, because your muscles will cool down. Uh, possibly no longer than 10, 15 minutes the most if you have to do it. And uh, you, you start off with a short program and you increase the degree of intensity as you go on. All right. Uh, but uh, the uh, most important thing to remember is um, after you do your exercises, rest, make sure you're well hydrated, very important. Um, and uh, finally, you, you check your parameters before and you compare it to after. Let's say your blood pressure start off with um, normal would be uh, between 90 over 60 to 120 over 80, and you end up with a blood pressure 150 over 100, my mind. That means you overdid it and that's a bit much. And that's a good signal. Stop everything and start fresh. And you have to review the program you did. Might be a bit too much for you. That's just an example. But that's why you have to check before and after. All right? Well, thank you so much, Dr. Isger. It's definitely been a very informative um, presentation. I, I've learned a lot. I think I, I really love the part about taking your kind of baseline, your vitals before and yes. after. I think that's something that I will incorporate in my own. It's a, it's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Pleasure. Thank you so much. If you have any other question, please feel free to send us a message via chat. It will, we can we will reach out to you personally if you have any um, question that you would like to address thank you again and we'll see you next month thank you for Bye. joining us